Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op. Hello, podcast listeners. So today we are talking about sensor sizes. Uh, what are they? How much do they matter? Does it matter? <laughs> and uh, what are some of the pros and cons? And do you need a bigger sensor? Kind of those are all the different things we're talking about today. All, all things sensor related. And remember, it's not the size that matters. It's how you use it. <laughs> yep. Uh, episode over. We're done. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be talking uh, sensor sizes today. Um, we'll talk about three main categories, but kind of just sensors in general. So uh, definitely stick around. We'll be chatting about what is good and bad for all of them and uh, what you should purchase depending on what you're doing. So uh, let's get right into it. Yeah, I, I thought it'd be good to start this episode with kind of an overview of like the history of film. Mm hmm. Um, and kind of why sensor sizes are the sizes that they are. So um, in film, you ha ha everyone was shooting large format, and then medium format came along, and medium format was more handheld. You didn't need to put your camera on a tripod. You could actually Whoa. you know, walk out and do it. Whoa, crazy. Um, and then 35 millimeter came along, and it kind of made it uh, more more accessible to the average person um you a parent could actually buy a 35 millimeter camera and take pictures of their kids and they didn't need to be a technician and figure out how this whole thing works they could just take photos kind of 35 mil was the smartphone camera of the day it it was <laughs> it was because previous to that you honestly really needed to like have good lighting and know exactly what you're doing yeah. and not everyone could do it oh, and it was expensive not everyone could afford it mm -hmm. um so, so in the history of cameras, digital is incredibly recent. Mm. Um, it has not been around that long. In fact, no one is alive today who has had an entire lifelong career in just digital because it's not that old yet. Um, so even though like I've been shooting digital my whole life, I, I'm not that old. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's, that's sensor size basically replaced the actual film negative that mm -hmm. was in the back of the camera. So rather than have an actual film strip, there's now a digital sensor that is kind of replacing that. So um, what what is basically why are these different sizes important? Well, um, in in the case uh, the the biggest. Uh, or smallest thing I should say about uh, sensor sizes in the digital world is uh, the pixel size. So um, just like your like the screen that you're looking at on your phone or your computer every day, um, sensors are uh, pixels. Uh, they're they're just a kind of a different type type of pixel. And in order to get uh, the equivalent resolution on different sensor sizes, you have to have different size pixels. So because you just have to fill uh, either smaller or greater amount of space. So if you have a 12 megapixel uh, sensor in um, Micro Four Thirds, APS-C, or full frame sensors, the full frame one will have the biggest pixels compared to the rest, which will have smaller and smaller pixels. And uh, the bigger the pixel is, just from its physical size, the more light it can gather, and therefore the better um, they are in low light. So that's just in, right off the bat something that uh, is a significant difference between different um, sensors. It gets muddy, though, because some uh, you know sensors are higher or lower megapixels so you might have like yeah a, not all sensors are equal, right exactly sure. so like you have full frames that are 12 megapixel 18 32 50 and like a 50 megapixel full frame sensor has smaller pixels than a 12 megapixel full frame sensor so even within a sensor size pixel size varies dramatically so it's not a one and done kind of deal as far as which one is better um, so I currently size. shoot with the Canon 5D Mark III, and I remember when the, I believe it was the 5DS and the 5DSR came mm -hmm. out. Um, and so when those cameras came out, because my camera is 21 megapixels, mm -hmm. and so those cameras were 50 megapixels. And the huge deal was, wow, I have a 50 megapixel camera. 
but people kept saying remember this 50 megapixels is on the same sensor size they're just more densely packed so you get resolution at the cost of low light uh, ability to render the image without you know grain mm -hmm. so that's excellent for studio photographers who are shooting at ISO 100 with a bunch of lights but terrible for like wildlife or wedding photographers that need to be out and capturing something in low light at a moment's notice mm -hmm. so there are trade-offs but the other thing to say too is like um a 36 megapixel whatever thing today is going to render way better uh low light than like my 12 megapixel camera from a decade ago so there is that thing of chasing chasing the image perfection the new shiny yeah I was that about, I was doesn't about to say, really matter yeah the the industry is always chasing itself it seems uh don't quote me on this but it seems like generally the trend is leap forward with some huge extra megapixel count and then slowly catch up in low light performance and then leap forward and slowly catch up. So like, you know, in in a few years, the 50 megapixel sensors might have the same low light performance as like the 12 megapixel uh, sensors today. Um, but it's, it's always the industry is always kind of chasing itself and you have to, no matter where you are in time, you have to make a trade off if you're buying new gear. Um, generally do you want more resolution or do you want more low light performance um that being said though uh as as you stated like a 50 megapixel you know bad low light performance full frame sensor today will still outperform you know almost any resolution from five years ago and before um if not even a little sooner than that so yeah so yeah. so let's talk about these three main sensor sizes the sure. 35 mil which is full frame, full frame. The APS-S or bleh, APS I always mess that up. <laughs> APS-C, yep. um, which known C as crop. is for crop, yes, mm -hmm. um, or micro four thirds. So uh, APS-C is basically the size of a postage stamp, mm -hmm. roughly, um, and then the full frame is kind of the size of like a collector's postage postage stamp, if you will. <laughs> it's Fancy. it's slightly bigger, but like nothing to write home about bigger so i i know there have been so many debates over the years and the internet has a long history of people saying that crop sensors are crap because you know they can't render as good as the full frame and blah 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 whatever mm -hmm. it's fine um and then micro four thirds is actually significantly smaller and the the one thing that threw me off about it was not necessarily the crop factor but the fact that it is actually four thirds mm -hmm. instead of two three Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's a it's a different uh, boy. We could go into the weeds so much on the <laughs> exact the uh, aspect ratio. aspect yeah. ratios and stuff. But yeah, it is it is uh, four thirds instead of uh, three to two, like um, most other uh, camera sensors are. So, yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. So so why would you get one of these sensors over the other? Well, um, it depends on uh, a bunch of things. Um, one is uh, certainly size and weight. Um, I mean, obviously, physically smaller sensors uh, can fit into smaller uh, camera bodies. Uh, that being said, that isn't always, with <laughs> as with many things photography, isn't always a sure deal. Like the uh, Panasonic GH5, a particularly successful kind of video-focused micro four-thirds sensor, uh, camera has quite a beefy body on it, um, very similar in size to an APS-C or even some full-frame uh, cameras. In fact, I know for a fact there are full-frame cameras that are smaller than the body of yeah, like the Sony full-frame camera. cameras, yeah, like the Sony or the even yeah. newer, new new Sony ones where they're they're basically putting full-frame sensors in APS-C uh, teeny little uh, bodies, and and those are actually smaller for the most part than uh, like a Panasonic GH5. So, um, but in general, smaller sensors equal smaller, lighter um, camera bodies, which... So I actually, you just a couple of months ago, bought a Micro Four Thirds camera. Now, mm -hmm. I already own multiple full-frame cameras. Why on earth would I do that? <laughs> Well, uh, Micro Four Thirds <laughs> is probably most popular in video, and uh, that's for a very good reason. So video, until super recently, um, is a lot smaller, um, 
uh, in you know a, a megapixel count perspective than photo. So you could get away with similar uh, video performance uh, in a smaller sensor because again you need less pixels even for an HD or for a 4K yeah. uh, image. If you're 4K shooting is like 4K, yeah, I was just yeah. about to say mm. if you're shooting 4K, that's only eight megapixels. Yeah. And if you tried to buy a camera at eight megapixels today, you would get laughed out. You mm-hmm. can't even mm-hmm. find something that small. Yeah. But in video land, that's huge. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, even a uh, even a the small micro four third sensor can do a great job uh, with an eight megapixel image for, for four fake four K video. The other huge bonus to shooting video on smaller sensors uh, is the, uh, the power and heat, uh, uh, factor. True. Um, bigger sensors require more power and, and put off much, much, much more heat than smaller sensors. So you can run, um, you know, like on a, on a GH5, you can run 4K video indefinitely uh, pretty much on that camera without overheating uh, or you Versus know, having like the new Canon issues. 5 are whatever, whatever it is yeah. mirrorless <laughs> i i i can't keep up but yeah that that new one people are saying like it burns out after what is it something like 20 minutes like 20 and then minutes. after that i only mm-hmm. get like four additional minutes or eight additional minutes so i'm like yeah what yeah, exactly so so that's the other trade-off is you, if you're shooting a lot of video especially long form video then maybe you actually you literally couldn't buy a full frame camera because it would limit you too much in the amount of time that you could shoot in any given setting. So uh, in that respect, a smaller sensor is superior or literally the only choice that you have uh, for that kind of work. So yeah, just like you mentioned, the reason why I bought the four thirds camera was 100% video related. I Mm. wanted to be able to shoot 4k. I wanted a small light camera. Um, I don't, plan on using that camera for stills although i did take it on trip and use it for stills and it turned out all right okay but um yeah no so when you get a smaller camera with a smaller sensor um it's like easier for hiking or travel or whatever because it's physically smaller um you can do better video with it because it won't heat up like you were saying but also all the lenses are way cheaper oh yeah um i mean again (laughs) smaller sensor means less that you need to do to deal with it and that includes the glass in front of the sensor um much less you know smaller lighter lenses um they're not necessarily mechanically less complex um because at the end of the day they they all still function relatively uh, similarly but just the fact that you need less glass to for an image from that lens to cover the whole sensor um, hugely reduces weight and and cost as a result so micro four thirds lenses are you can get some fantastic uh, performing lenses for a tiny fraction of what a full frame equivalent lens would cost uh, and fast ones too like you, you don't even necessarily have to sacrifice uh, you know image quality or low light performance um, you can get just fantastic deals in in micro four thirds it's a it's a great great system for video like the system for video absolutely so kind of moving up the food chain Mm -hmm. uh APS-C those crop sensor cameras Mm -hmm. the only thing that I knew about this when I was buying cameras is this was the only one I could afford Mm because you could get one of these at Costco for $500 or you could spend two and a half grand to get a full frame one Mm -hmm. and that's basically all I knew about it I'm like cool I'm doing this then (laughs) Yeah, APS-C uh, to me is, um, I, I think this is the least likely one to survive uh, the next five years. Um, Sony in particular has been a huge champion of APS-C and uh, in their uh, A6000 uh, series cameras, those are all APS-C and, uh, and before that, the next series um, really put them on the, the market as like, this is a, uh, a mirrorless camera to take uh, to take seriously that can do really serious work that's really small and light and easy to use and uh, cheaper but has really good performance that being said um, Sony in particular their lens mount works both for their APS-C cameras and their full frame cameras and they're starting to put huge full frame sensors in tiny APS-C bodies so my guess is they're slowly going to squish that part of their um, their lineup and I would I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, granted, 
predicting this stuff is extremely difficult but i wouldn't be surprised if kind of everybody else follows suit um and makes sense and and yeah it's, it's just a lot, a lot less it's it's increasingly less costly to do full frame sensors uh so there's less and less of a reason you could do like a a cheaper entry level full frame sensor and keep the rest of your lens mounts and bodies and stuff relatively similar um so grand scheme they become cheaper than doing an entirely separate line a separate a sensor line entirely for kind of an entry level camera so i could see the market getting rid of aps-c very soon that being said there are still some fantastic uh, aps-c cameras out there if that's what your budget fits um that is a good way to go and they're super popular with uh wildlife uh, photographers yes. because you can and put sports and sports because you can put uh generally you can put full frame uh, uh, lenses on them and get better or longer uh, zoom range out of it than you would on a full frame uh, camera and you'd get similar performance to full frame um, APS-C and full frame are pretty darn close in performance nowadays um, so it's a it's a good answer for that kind of work yeah no I, I was gonna say that they're pretty much exactly the same the only difference is it costs less and Mm -hmm. it zooms in a little so if you shoot one of those genres where you're looking at buying more expensive longer glass well buy that long glass and put it on a crop sensor camera and now your glass just got a little longer yeah for for free essentially um because pretty much every crop is in between 1.3 and 1.7 times zoom so that turns a what 400 millimeter lens into a like a 600 640 something mm-hmm. like that yeah. math on the fly not yeah. not my forte <laughs> but I, I think i got pretty close yeah. um yeah so so there's definitely things to be said for hey if you shoot one of those things a crop sensor camera might be for you so full frame i remember uh years ago having this debate with people where people are saying full frame is the only way to go you should never buy a camera unless it's full frame so why why would we say that? Well, um, I mean, it, it really is kind of the uh, other than the esoteric nowadays esoteric medium format and large format because it's I mean, thirty five millimeter equivalent. Like yeah, yeah it is one. it is the end it is the end game. Like if you if you can uh, if you can get there, like you'll probably stick to full frame and and with the exception of very task specific things like buying micro four thirds for video i mean full frame is it for for photographs um i mean just the bigger sensors better low light almost every time uh the like all of your um lenses are the zoom range that they say on on the box (laughs) yeah they're not cropping in they're not cropping in like it's just it has the performance at least for stills anyway it has the performance it has uh both in in resolving power and in low light um it is great for landscapes because it's got uh you can put you know your your wide lenses are truly oh yeah super wide on a full frame and putting those lenses on an APS-C or a micro four thirds are going to be cropped and they're not you can't get as wide in in those bodies so uh it is the end game of digital photography really and and once i got to that point uh which I only got into full frame relatively recently since I'm mostly a video guy. Uh, I have stuck into full frame. That being said, I occasionally get tempted by micro four thirds stuff um, for video. I just happened to buy a full frame camera that was decent at video, but occasionally maybe someday I'll cave and get a micro four thirds again. But as far as APS-C now, I have no interest. Like I shot APS-C yeah. for quite a while and don't get me wrong. It was great to get me in. I did some really fun stuff in APS-C. There's nothing wrong with it. It was just a budgetary constraint, but I see no reason to buy APS-C having gone full frame now. And the only reason to buy anything else is buying a micro four thirds camera for the video performance. That's about I, I, I think the one reason to buy ASPC is if you're like a parent or a hobbyist or someone oh, yeah. who wants nicer photos, but mm-hmm. you don't plan on being a photographer, mm-hmm. you save a buttload of money by yeah. buying a crop sensor camera that performs essentially identically to mm-hmm. the bigger one. Um, the two things that really surprised me, like I, when I upgraded from crop sensor to full frame, mm-hmm. um, there were a bunch of things that I knew I was getting. I knew I was getting um, more low light performance. I knew I was getting more you know, frames per second and autofocus points and all of those things. 
But the two things that really surprised me were one, being able to actually see how wide it is, because I had a 10 millimeter lens um, or 12 millimeter lens that um, I put on my crop sensor, which turns into a 24. Mm-hmm. And then when I actually put that on, um, on my full frame camera, it basically turned into like a fisheye. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And I just didn't know how wide a camera's field of view could actually get. So if you shoot landscapes, don't just full frame. Yep. We're done. Stop listening. Full frame. <laughs> yeah, I like shooting stuff wide. So um, full frame is like it, that that exact thing, like having that width was huge. And like buying a, yeah. buying a, a wide zoom and having a, a decently fast but like truly wide lens that I could just walk around with and, and use for all sorts of fun stuff, like that was amazing. And you can't really, you can't easily get that in any other platform. Yeah, the the other thing that um, really surprised me about it, it was actually the viewfinder. Because on Mm -hmm. crop sensor cameras, your viewfinder is about 96%, which Mm -hmm. means that that you get an extra 4%-ish of the image that is coming through the lens and hitting your sensor. And you will see on your computer that you are not seeing when you're actually looking through the viewfinder composing the image. Yep. So on a full frame camera, having a hundred percent viewfinder, like when you take a photo and then you put it on your camera and you're like, Oh, why is there like a little stick in the corner? Why is the, there like a, that person's red sweatshirt? I didn't see that when I was shooting it. Well, no, you wouldn't have seen that because it was just right there on the edge of the frame. So that to me was a huge thing where that happened to my photos a lot, where I thought I wasn't paying enough close enough attention to the frame. And then I learned about the viewfinder. Um, Basically that zooms in just the tiniest bit as well. And I realized, oh, I'm doing my best to pay attention to the edges of my frame, but I literally can't see them until after I shoot it. So those those were kind of the two huge game changers for me that I did not expect when I yeah. was buying full frame. You think, oh, it covers the vast majority of it. It's only a few percent that I'm not seeing. But that like, matters. It matters, and it, it gets annoying really quickly. <laughs> it much does. much more quickly than you'd expect. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so uh, I don't know. Do we do we do we have a theme or a moral today? I think the moral is sensor size doesn't really matter. Choose the one that's right for you, not necessarily mm-hmm. the one that everyone says you should get. Mm-hmm. Um, like like we said, we have used all three of them. I mm-hmm. currently still own all three of them. Although uh, to be fair, my AS, APSC has been kind of backburnered, yeah. but. Um, yeah uh, yeah i would say yeah buy buy what fits your budget or um what makes the most sense for you the only time that sensor size matters is will matter in a situation where you already know exactly what you need and you'll buy it for that yeah. use like you know you need micro four thirds because you're going to shoot two hours of video straight and you buy it for that use so if you're somebody new to the game you know pick what what looks what looks good to you what fits your use what fits your budget um the only time sensor size matters beyond that is when you know more. So yeah, um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I mean, I was really tired of vlogging with a full frame DSLR on mm-hmm. the end of a stick. That's it's heavy. That's that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, excellent. Um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful uh, and and illuminated a little bit about why uh, sensor size matters a lot less than people say it does. Um, you'll come across people that are boy only in a single camp usually full frame and you can just uh, ignore what they have to say and be happy with whatever gear you like to use and that you bought um if they're being uh, really snobbish and elitist about it just just tell them like up oh, if you really cared that much why don't you go one step up yeah. why, why aren't you shooting medium <laughs> format god what's wrong with you you why, why are you shooting medium format when you could shoot large format <laughs> why why are you shooting four by five when you could be shooting eight by ten <laughs> that's way too small so there you go there's there's your your pro tip for dealing with uh sensor size snobs <laughs> all right thanks so much for joining us uh ben what do you think we're going to talk about next time i don't know i i i think that we have a fun story about uh about fun little piece of art history that every artist slash photographer should know about because uh it's entertaining and I'm, I'm not going to say any more than that. So tune in for story time next time <laughs> here on Photo Op Podcast. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo-op.show. <laughs>
Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at Nom Creative. As in Om Nom Nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Because it's free.